Hello, today we'll be working in equivalent fractions and decimals to prepare us for that study island quiz in fifth grade math, numbers and operations. We're looking at Oklahoma Academic Standards 2.4, which just sounds like this. Recognize and generate equivalent decimals, fractions, mixed numbers, and fractions less than one in various contexts. What does that mean? You're going to be able to recognize and create equivalent fractions, decimals, you're going to be able to switch some mixed numbers to improper fractions, and you'll be able to recognize and generate fractions less than one in various contexts. So let's get started. How would the following mixed number be written as an improper fraction? Well, if you watched the video pr uh, prior to this on my YouTube channel, we did a review on improper fractions to, um, or from, uh, mixed numbers to improper fractions and so you'll know that this right here is just saying that we have three groups of whole 14 over 14 and I'm just taking that desk that denominator we have three of them how do I know we have three whole because that whole number right there is three and then I have one more part that is not quite whole it's 10 over 14 okay so when I put all of this together to create that improper fraction, I am simply adding all the way across from my numerators, and my denominator stays the same. And when I add all this up, it gets me 52. Now your instinct might be to look over here at these answers and go, oh wait, Miss L, I see 55 over 14. I see 51 over 14. Did we make a mistake? No. And I know it's tempting to go ahead and just guess. Oh, it's one of those. It's closer to that one. Let's just go with this one. Don't do that. Don't let those tricky test makers trick you. We have 14 three times here, right? So that gets me 42. Then I add that 10, and that's how I get to the 52 over 14. Now, I take that 52 over 14, and I recognize that both of those are even numbers. That means they're both divisible by 2. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to say 52 divided by 2, when I reduce that down, gets me 26. And 14 divided by 2 gets me 7. Hey, look, there's the correct answer. Don't jump to conclusions too fast when you're answering these. You have to be smarter than those tricky test makers, okay? Take a look at the next one. Which of the following is equivalent to 3 eighths? Well, 3 eighths I recognize is less than one whole because my denominator is less than my numerator. It's also less than half, so this is actually going to be less than half. 8 thirds, well, that's going to be a whole number in there. I got some whole pieces, so it's not that one. 12 20 seconds. Hmm. Well, I know I can say 3 times 4 gets me 12, but is 8 times 4 22? Nope. That's not going to be equivalent either. I'm down to a couple choices here. 15 fortieths and 9 sixteenths. Let me rewrite this over here and give myself some room. I know 3 eighths is in its simplest form or its lowest terms here because that 3 is prime. It can go no lower. So I'm just going to start expanding this out a little bit. What are two sets of 3 eighths? Well, two sets of 3 eighths is going to get me 6 sixteenths because 3 times 2 is 6. 8 times 2 is 16. Well, what if I have three sets of 3 eighths? That gets me a 9. 8 times 3 is 24. That's me 9 24 I see this 9 16 down here. That's not either one of these. I'm looking probably at that. But before you just jump the gun here, let's keep going mathematically. I have another set of 3 eighths. When I expand it out, 3 times 4 gets me the 12. 8 times 4, 32. That's not it either. Let's go again. Let's do 5 sets of 3 eighths. That's going to get me 15 fortieths because 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times that 5 is 40. So the correct answer is 15 fortieths. Next. Now this one says to type the correct answer in each box, and if you're taking this on your test at the end of the year, you're actually going to type. I don't have that option here in this format, so I'm still going to continue to write. Now, which numbers correctly replace the letters to show pairs of equivalent fractions? One half is equal to a over four. A is equal to blank. 
Well, anytime something is equivalent to a half, the numerator has to be exactly half of the denominator. What is half of 4? Well, you guys know half of 4 is 2. Or I can think 2 times 2 equals 4, 1 times 2 equals 2. So now let's look here. We have 2 over b equals 8 twelfths. What's the relationship between the 2 and the 8? Remember, I'm only looking at multiplication and division here. All right, some kids want to say plus 6. Mm, no, that is not how we get equivalency with our fractions. So multiply 2 times what gets me 8. Or I can think 8 divided by 2 equals... Oh, I know that one's 4. So I'm going to take this. 12 divided by 4 gets me... What is that? 3. Now let's check it to be sure. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. Alright, now let's look here. We have 3 fifths equals to 6 over C. This is growing here. So I'm going to go 3 times what equals 6? Well, I know that's 3 times 2. So 5 times 2 equals 10. So 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths. Convert to a decimal, six-fifths. Now, hopefully, you are fairly comfortable with the idea that this fraction bar here is the same as a division symbol. So basically what you're saying is six divided by five. And we're going to figure out what the decimal is here. Five goes into six one time. Well, I'm going to have to place my decimals. And bring down five goes into ten how many times? Sorry, I got a little carried away here. I'll bring down my decimals. I'll bring down the zero here. How many times is 5 going to 10? 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10, so I end up with a zero remainder. My equivalency is 1.2. Of course, on the test you'll have a calculator. Okay, You'll be allowed to use a calculator in 5th grade and up. You could just simply put in 6 divided by 5 and it will give you this answer. Okay. So convert it to a decimal simply means use that fraction bar. Let's look here. We have which of the following is equivalent to 14 over 21? My first question is, can I reduce this down? When I'm looking at my answers here, that one's greater, that one's greater, that one's less, that one's greater. 7 fourteenths. Can I reduce this to 7 fourteenths? Well, 14 divided by see if I do the 2 over 2, that gets me the 7, but 21 divided by 2 does not get me the 14. This is not going to reduce in that manner. Another way to look at it, 14 over 21. What are the factors of 14? I have 1, 2, 7, and 14, correct? Will 14 divide evenly into that? Yes, yes it will. I'll divide evenly into that. Will it divide evenly into the den denominator? No, it won't. Well, my 7, yes. I could reduce both of these by 7, which would get me 2 thirds. Okay? Now, I don't have 2 thirds here either, but I can start taking this and start growing it out. And I'm going to go back to my original, which was 14 over 21. Start expanding it. Okay? So, 14, 21. 14 over or times 2 gets me 28. 21 times 2 gets me 42. Does that look familiar? One right there is equivalent to 14 over 21. Okay. Now, is this also equivalent to 2 thirds? Yeah. I can divide 28. How do I get this to reduce to 2? It goes back down to my 14 because I divide it back here by the what I started with. Okay, which would be the 2, which would get me back down to the 14. 21. I can divide it back down by the 7, which gets me the 2 thirds. That was kind of a roundabout way of doing that. I apologize. All right, now we take a look here. Which of the following fraction? Write the following fraction as a decimal. Well, this is written as 1 8. Do not be 
fooled by this one and eight tenths right here. Some of you will say, oh, one and eight. Well, one eighth is definitely less than one whole, right? If I have something divided into eight parts, good Lord, those are not equal. Please excuse that. That is horrifying. Um, I have something divided into eight parts and only have one of them. That is not near one whole. That's way less than half. It's closer to zero. So I know I'm not going to have anything over this one. That cannot be it. Remember earlier we said this is a fraction bar. It's also a decimal. Okay, so one divided by eight. And you're going, wait, Miss L, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you can. You just have to start adding out some zeros here. Let's start with two zeros. Eight goes into one? Nope. But eight goes into ten one time. down to zero. How many times is 8 going to 20? You know it is 2 because that gets us the 16. And again, if you have your calculator, you can just use it. How many times 8 going to 4? Not finished yet, so I'm going to have to add some more zeros there. 8 into 40? 5 times. And I know that's going to get me my 40, which gets me my 0. So my answer is 125 thousandths. All right? This one, convert that number to a fraction. Well, folks, when we read that number, how do we read this? Zero and one, what? It's actually read as the word, it's read as one-tenth. Find one-tenth. Oh, wait, there it is. You actually said the answer when you read the problem, okay? so. Need you to go to Study Island, open up your math lessons, and find equivalent fractions and decimals. It's down low, 2G. Complete that quiz, and holler if you have questions. Have a great evening.